you know, a lot of folks may not get a lot of education uh, with their oxygen therapy when they get it first set up. And I think one of the things that a lot of people are concerned about is how can they stay safe with oxygen therapy? You know, you may get a sign that talks about uh, no, no open flames or things like that. So I was wondering if you would share with us some tips that you might have uh, for someone who's relatively new or even hasn't maybe contemplated some of these things before, but how can people stay safe while using their oxygen around the home? Well, first of all, I think it's really important to understand that oxygen does not burn. Oxygen does feed a flame or it feeds a fire. So that's the issue that really is, is important. Uh, and when you're looking at home use, I don't think that there's really anything in a home that should be absolutely out of reach or verboten to people using oxygen. But I do think that the people using oxygen need to be capable of seeing what the potential issues might be and being very careful to avoid them. You know, obviously one of the big things is you want to avoid an open flame. And one of the things that people are often told about is they're, they're told not to use that. Well, it says don't use near open flames. Well, they've got a gas stove, which means that they can't go near the stove. Well, that's not true. You can. Uh, and, and it's perfectly possible to cook quite safely, uh, even if you're using oxygen, but you do have to be careful. You have to be really careful that the, the cannula, the plastic piece, doesn't get anywhere near that flame because that's going to turn the oxygen loose in the, in the area and it might feed the fire that when the plastic burns, uh, if the plastic is actually burning rather than just melting. Uh, but And then if anything else catches fire because people are nervous or upset or, you know, something happens and uh, whatever, uh, that, that can cause real problems. So you do want to be really, really careful. One of the things that a lot of people do is rather than having the uh, cannula hooked over their ears like this, uh, they simply put it on and flip it over their heads so that it goes down, the, it goes down your back. Um, obviously, I'm not very good at this. Uh, I don't have a gas stove, so I don't do this very often. But you can do this and run the cannula down your back and it, and it works really well. Uh, it keeps it out of, you know, so yeah, is it, obviously I'm not very good at this, um, but, but that's something that a lot of people do and, and it really does work well. Uh, it, sometimes people are told not to use a, a curling iron. Well, you don't want the curling iron to touch your, your cannula, but you also don't want the curling iron to touch your face. So as long as you are being very careful about it and not getting it up here where, you know, you're going to, you're going to touch the, the curling iron to the, to the, to the cannula and put a hole in the cannula, uh, you're really probably just, you're probably just fine. It, it, it's like so many other things. Oxygen can be a real problem if you let it, but if you're careful, you can do pretty much anything you want. Uh, the other thing that sometimes people get concerned about, and about the only time that I've ever been in, say, a hotel gym or, or something like that, where people, where somebody actually questioned my oxygen usage, what they were concerned about was they thought that the damn thing would blow up. Um, you know, and an oxygen tank doesn't blow up. Uh, a POC doesn't blow up. Even a, I mean, a, a plug-in concentrator on the wall doesn't blow up. Uh, but people don't know that. They think that oxygen blows up. <laughs> and, and so you really do need to make sure that people understand that it's not going to blow up. Uh, it may, for instance, with a tank, if you ever miss the boat when you're putting the, the regulator on and the little seal doesn't work properly, I mean, it sounds like the thing is going to blow up, but all that's happening is that the oxygen is escaping. Uh, and, and that can happen in a variety of places and in a variety of ways. 
I'm very lucky in that I use liquid oxygen. Uh, and about a year ago, I had a surgical procedure that sent me to the hospital for about, I don't know, eight hours or so. And they did the surgical procedure very early in the morning. And then I went to uh, the recovery room. Well, of course, you know, when I got there and we, I got all my clothes off and they, they put all my personal possessions in little pla in plastic bags and closed them up, including my liquid oxygen dispenser. So I'm in the recovery room. The, the dispenser has been in this plastic bag for, I don't know, probably by that time, maybe three or three and a half hours or so. And all of a sudden this plastic bag is blowing up in my room and there's this God awful noise. And let me tell you, three nurses show up and they were panic stricken, but it was my <laughs> liquid oxygen. And I hadn't thought about the fact that if you put liquid oxygen in a plastic bag, it doesn't have any ventilation. So it's going to freeze up and then it's going to, and then it, all the oxygen is going to go away. And that's what happened, but scared them a half out of their wits. They didn't realize what was going on. And my oxygen provider had to bring me a tank so I could go home. 